Bakuman is a manga written by Tsugumi Oba, who might better be known as the writer of Death Note. Bakuman was Oba's next manga following Death Note, and while it didn't gain the same mainstream appeal that Death Note has, Bakuman is still a, a well-respected and popular manga, with a well-received anime adaptation. Reading Bakuman, I felt the same as when I watched Death Note. If you know anything about me though, you'll recognize that isn't exactly a compliment. Following up my Death Note video, which was terribly received, and for good reason, uh, with another video criticizing yet another beloved series might seem a bit strange, but I have good reason. I, I think that by reading Bakuman you can get a better understanding of Death Note, and better see the flaws within it. And while I no longer feel like it's fair to call Death Note trash, I do still think that it is at least a bit overrated. And I think I'm better able to articulate why. Before that though, let's talk about Bakuman. Bakuman follows the career of a manga artist duo who seek to have the number one series published in Shonen Jump. We follow them from middle school to adulthood as they tirelessly pursue their goal and perfect their skill. The concept is brilliant, the characters are well written and compelling, the opening volumes are remarkable and genuinely some of the most well written and compelling chapters of manga that I've read. I genuinely advise that you check this manga out if you have even a passing interest in the manga industry. You may want to hear my full thoughts before committing to a 20 volume or 75 episode story though. See while Bakuman starts strong there is a dip in quality, subtle and minor though a dip nonetheless. The decline in quality is slow, but steady, and you'll soon find yourself reading each chapter not because you're actually interested in what's happening, but because you're hoping that it'll reach the heights that it once had. Then after the series has devolved to a point unrecognizable to where it started, it ends with a whimper. The same can be said of Death Note. Another series with a truly outstanding premise and opening, great characters and amazing beginning which slowly dips in quality. Many are able to excuse this, uh, many will take issue with me calling Death Note or Bakuman trash because of these flaws, and honestly I don't think it's fair to call either trash. Death Note is not trash, neither is Bakuman. To judge a piece of media solely by its lowest point is just as irresponsible as judging it solely at its peak. I'm partially making this video as an apology to Death Note for the things I said of it. Well, I told myself I wasn't just being a contrarian and anyone who got mad at my opinion was just an angry fanboy, I, I can't honestly say that I was being fair anymore. But like all things, the truth lies somewhere in the middle, somewhere between the masterpiece that Death Note is praised as and the trash that I once called it. And I think it's through Bakuman that we can find that middle ground. See, I, I actually read all of Bakuman in a week. I, I loved Bakuman. I recommend Bakuman without any caveats, despite my feelings on it, because I enjoyed it so much. But as I start to think critically, I, I started to see the patterns. I, I started to see the holes in Oba's writings. The parallels between Death Note and Bakuman are apparent once you look into it. Uh, see, in addition to their quality graphs being identical, the genre and audience are also quite similar. Super Eyepatch Wolf described them, among other anime and manga, as non-battle battle anime, stories that are structured like a typical shonen battle anime, but where battles are fought with the brain and not with their fists. Kaguya-sama and Promised Neverland are two other prominent examples of this genre. See, I, I feel like this genre was actually created by Oba with Death Note. Uh, Super Eye Patch Wolf names Kaiji as another example of this, a manga which came out before Death Note, and there are very likely other examples of similar manga that predate Death Note and even Kaiji. But there's a clear divide between before and after Death Note. See, regardless of who actually was the one that started this trend, I, I think it's clear that Oba laid the foundation with Death Note. Here's the thing, non-battle battle anime are amazing. Kaguya-sama may be my favorite manga. The first season of Promised Neverland single-handedly revitalized my love for anime. It's a shame that season 2 was cancelled and never came out. Maybe they'll make a second season eventually. A huge part of why so many people adore Death Note and Bakuman is because of this trope. I'm, I'm, I'm saying all of this for two reasons. First, to establish clear similarities between the two manga, especially for those who aren't familiar with both, but also to make it clear how much I respect Death Note and Bakuman, and how much I credit Oba for these ideas that he's laid out and all of these things that he's written. I want to make this second part clear because of what I'm about to say. By reading Bakuman after consuming Death Note, you'll see Oba's flaws pretty clearly. Due to its nature about being about manga creation, it's inevitable that some of Oba's own experiences and emotions would come through through the manga. Uh, it's possible that I'm reading into things too much and grasping at straws, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Oba clearly is amazing at coming up with concepts for manga. In Bakuman, you can see how he views the pitch of a manga as the most important thing. 
it makes sense. You need a good pitch in order to get a few chapters published and you need to get published in order to get a paycheck. And then you need to write more chapters to continue to get that paycheck. In Bakuman, you can even see the editors of the magazine push the authors and artists to continue writing stories even if they want them to end. There's pressure not to end a story that's popular. It's hard to read these chapters without thinking this is something Oba has seen or experienced. Then you take another look at Death Note and Bakuman. Both are manga with amazing premises that start really well. Both feel like they could have ended in 50 chapters in, yet both continue for much longer. As they go on, the quality dips until they're a shell of what they once were, and then they end with a whimper. I can't say that Oba continued writing Death Note and Bakuman past where he wanted to end them due to editor interference. Maybe this is the ending he always wanted. Maybe this is what he wanted to happen. For a while, I just assumed that Oba wasn't that good at closing stories. Maybe he just came up with a concept and didn't know where he wanted to take it exactly. And after he passed the point of his outline, he became lost and unable to meet the heights that he began at. I, I honestly can't say. Despite the way these stories go, you still have to recognize where they once started. And you have to give them credit for that, at least. Personally, I find Bakuman to have a higher level of consistency. While it also has a drop in quality, I was, I was never bored, like I felt during some parts of Death Note. Though, I think the Death Note also has higher highs. The first 10 episodes are, to this day, some of the most compelling episodes of anime I've ever seen. Whichever you prefer, I understand why you feel the way you do. I guess I just hope you can understand why I feel how I do. As I said, I'm making this video as an apology to Death Note. I, I, I felt uncomfortable when I saw that my Death Note review had 15,000 views and that it was climbing. I don't like that video. I don't think it was well made. I don't agree with everything I say in it, and I don't find myself well articulated. Big Droll made a video criticizing Death Note, and I wish that that came out before I made mine, so I could watch it and see how it perfectly encapsulates my feelings on the show and never choose to make that review in the first place. I'm uncomfortable with the idea that the most well-known thing I've ever done was a poorly written, poorly constructed, poorly edited rant condemning something that is universally adored. I'm concerned that this video is not going to be any different, but I hope that it is. I hope that with this video I can move past that Death Note video. I hope that this is a more accurate display of my thoughts. I'm sure that there are some people that would just tell me to delete the Death Note video if I hate it so much, but I feel more uncomfortable at the thought of doing that. I don't want to just erase something I did from existence because I don't like it anymore. Uh, like it or not, I made that Death Note review. I spent hours working on it, and watched it, and felt it was good enough to show the world. I, I can't just pretend that didn't happen. Enough of my rambling, though. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I was able to make something you enjoyed. Uh, if you're wondering why I haven't been making videos regularly, I think you just saw a snippet of it. I just don't like the videos I make. It's hard to watch them back and feel proud of something I've done. I've written quite a few scripts for videos that I ended up not ever making because I didn't want to upload another video I'd later realize wasn't worth putting online. As I'm writing this script, I'm not even sure I'll make this video. Though, if you're watching it, I suppose I did. It's hard to make something you're proud of, and it feels wrong to publish something you aren't. I'll try to get better about posting. If you've watched this far, you're kind of wild. You should probably subscribe. You should also definitely check out my podcast, A uh, Hot Take Table. It's probably a lot better than this. I at least enjoy watching it a lot more than I enjoy watching the videos on this channel. Or don't. I'm not your mom. Just do whatever the heck you want. Later.